There you go. All right, we're on in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, and 1. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Moments of Time, brought to you by the ALF Museum. We're really excited to have you all here for our brand new speaker series, and tonight is a very special treat because we, you are all going to be meeting some of our amazing, amazing students. Now, when we say students, I'm sure some of you might be wondering, a museum, uh, are they college students or something? Well, not quite. Here at the ALF Museum, we have a very unique um, kind of deal going on, right? So the ALF Museum is the only accredited paleontology museum on a high school campus, and that is the Webb Schools. So that means the ALF Museum um, we do a lot of really great work teaching high school students about paleontology, whether it's, you know, going out in the field, doing field work, um, wait, that's the same thing, doing field work, doing research, um, and it all comes down to this really cool legacy um, started by our founder, Dr. Raymond Alf, who used to bring his students out to the field and he used to help them collect fossils and of course started this whole museum. And one of the things he liked to say as a teacher at the Webb Schools was, um, what will you do with your moment of time? And you know, that's what we like to carry on the tradition um, in this series is we're gonna be talking with so many of our great students and alumni and asking them what they've done What's with their on? moment of time here What's at going? the ALF Museum. Um, so really quick, for those of you who are joining us, in the chat, I put a so, little hi, link. Hi, my name is Yvonne Gutt, like and I'm a BWS senior, from, so and, and I'm currently in the Advanced button. Studies in Paleontology and research now, class I think I'd like um, to introduce at, at our Web, amazing and scholars. I am Hello, researching everybody. a little rodent skull um, that belongs <laughs> to the genus Multisuperculate. Uh, why don't we uh, that is a new species you that introduce yourself. we're very close to publishing a new paper on, so it's very exciting. Hey y'all, uh, I'm Nick. I'm a senior uh, at the Web School California, which is one of the two web schools. Uh, I am currently writing a paper on a new rodent also uh, that we are deeming dual sundered on Farkey eye after actually somebody in the museum, Dr. Andrew Farkey. Uh, we're really excited about it. Some things awesome. that I do outside of web or good outside good to have of you here, paleontology. How about you, Nick? I play water polo, I swim, I'm a member of student government, and I do a lot of uh, DEI work, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion work. So I'm really excited and um, I love being here. Hi guys, I'm Logan. I'm a uh, senior at the Web Schools of California. Um, I'm also in the Advanced Studies in Paleontology class. My research is composed of uh, studying things like dromaeosaurs and tyrannosaurs from the Mesa Verde Formation in Wyoming. Um, and we've been getting some identifications on those dromaeosaurs, uh, working towards some of the tyrannosaurs. Um, and you, Logan. Outside of paleontology, I also play water polo. I also swim with Nick. Um, I'm a peer advisor, which means I um, help new kids to campus feel um, acclimated and feel welcome. And I also help with student inclusion events. Is there like background noise for me? No. Oh, okay, okay. Oh. 
That's okay. We're going to head back in, in just a second. You ready? Okay. Here we go. Oh, okay. Sorry, everybody. We had a little bit of a technical issue. I think it should be fixed now. Hopefully, if you see anything with, like, audio, please let us know in the chat. We'll try our best to fix it. Um, so, yeah. So, all of you are here joining us um, on our panel to talk about what it's like to go to a high school with its own museum. Um, all of you, like you said, are currently I, seniors I doing really cool off. research programs. But let's kind of um, go so back to I the found out about of, the web you know, schools when you got to through web, what was it that um, some really information that was coming my way um, to through parents, through friends, um, also that kind of thing. But I heard about this summer program, program that you know, I've been a dinosaur a lot of people since like think about when they tall, get to right? go to a high school. Had the dinosaurs on the brain. So um, I found out there was this really cool summer program at this place called Web. So I thought I'd give it a try, you know, do some fossicking. Um, and we show up and it's this museum on a high school campus. I thought nothing of it. I thought, you know, oh, it's just a cool summer program. And, you know, as I was getting into the program, I'm realizing, wow, like students do this. Like kids like two years, three years older than me at the time are starting to do research. Um, and that's what really got me hooked on Web. And when I came to Web, that was one of the main driving reasons was you know, participating in paleontology and doing some research and going out in the field. And so that was definitely what caught my interest in web and then what continued to drive me to apply as a student. Um, same for me. I was actually in that same summer program. That's actually how I met both Logan and Mr. Santos like six, five, six years ago. <laughs> so long ago. Um, but that, that was actually when I first saw my first fossil and I was also always interested in paleontology and dinosaurs um, but it was kind of like a side hobby. I always knew that I was interested in the sciences um, and it was just something that I never had the chance to really explore and do an in-depth, um, have an in-depth experience with and so I decided to just try it out and see what happened and here, here I am. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna kind of go in contrast to the other two. I didn't hear about web. Um, I came upon web pretty serendipitously. I didn't hear about web until about two months before the application deadline. And I actually ended up applying to web for reasons that had no relationship to the Paleo Museum. Uh, I ended up coming to web because I wanted to go to this awesome private school I heard about that allowed students to really connect with teachers and really experience almost a college liberal arts setting in high school. And then I ended up coming to web and I, I saw that they had a museum on campus. And it's one of those things when, when you have a museum on campus, you're not, you can't help but just be driven towards it. You're like, now there's this opportunity for me to see the science that I'm doing actually play out in real life, right? Because I'd been going to the Librea Tar Pits since I was probably four or five. And I remember the Librea Tar Pits and thinking, this is so cool. I remember doing the little exhibits where you uh, see how much tar you can pull out it was a really awesome experience, but I never thought of doing it as a student, as a researcher. And then I came to Web and they gave me this opportunity to actually conduct hands-on research. And that really opened my mind to it. I fell in love with paleontology and um, now I'm thinking about going to STEM in college uh, because it's just something I'm so passionate about. That's awesome. It's, I can't believe it's been six years since I met some of you oh, in the right? summer program. That's crazy. And now you guys are seniors. Oh, I'm sad. Anyway, um, you know, you all have really cool stories of like coming in, doing this summer program, or not even realizing it. And, you know, for a lot of, for most students in the world, being able to not only just see fossils, but also work with them is such a unique experience. And for all of you, kind of, what was it like that first time you got to go, you know, see a fossil and like handle it and like, um, kind of just understand that what you're holding is something that existed millions of years ago. Um, I, I guess I can go first. For me, when I first handled my first fossil, I was like terrified <laughs> um, and had a bit of like an existential crisis about it. Um, Cause I was just like scared of breaking it, of this is such an important part of our history of our Earth's history, and I get to experience it firsthand, um, and it just it made me feel like so 
insignificant <laughs> and like it was kind of humbling but also like how like simultaneously insignificant and significant I was that this one fossil can have so much meaning but it's also just one creature from millions of years ago that happened to be fossilized and now we're studying it like that is such a cool concept and one that's so hard to still to this day wrap my head fully around right i'm gonna be honest the first time i worked with real fossils i couldn't distinguish a fossil from a rock so this was a ninth grade packery trip that every student on web goes on and um how it essentially goes is a couple of museum staff including uh the museum director dr lofgren come over and uh they take all the freshman students on a trip into the barstow mountains to collect fossils now, me being a student who had never been involved in paleontology, who just thought paleontology was another ology, like you have zoology, mixology, and I got paleontology. Um, I picked up a rock and gave it a doc and was like, is this a fossil? He's like, no, that's a rock. And I kept on repeating this process over and over until I found a fossil. And I found this fossil, and then you kind of start to look at it, and you think, what is the importance of this? Why was this the one worth keeping in comparison to the other ones? And then you start actually studying it. Um, so we got back and I realized there was a horse tibia. Um, but in reality, it, it meant so much more, right? It was a creature from millions of years ago that really represented their moment in time. That's something we talk about a lot in this museum. And ultimately, I came back uh, the next year. I started uh, work in paleontology. And um, we started learning about these actual horses. And then I went on a peckery trip in the summer of my sophomore year. And sophomore my junior year um and i ended up finding a fossil that uh was a crocodile tooth and i ended up actually studying that crocodile tooth in my asip class doing research on it it was such an awesome 360 because now not only is the fossil i'm collecting meaningful and i know what it is but now i'm actually doing research on it and being able to discover deeper meaning that I can share with the broader world it was it was a really awesome experience it was really humbling I can really relate to Nick. Um, the fossils I'm studying from the Mesoverde, um, all these dromaeosaur and carnivorous dinosaur tooths are the same ones uh, I crawled on scorching hot dirt to get because they're these tiny itty bitty things like no bigger than your th uh, thumbnail. Uh, but the first time I handled one, um, I think it was in Kaparowitz, Mr. Santos. Um, Kaparowitz is this very jagged mountain range in Utah. It's a um, Cretaceous formation. And I was there pre-freshman year. Um, I came on the Peckery trip uh, with Yvonne, actually, before we were, I came as freshman. It was like summer of eighth grade to freshman year. Um, and we emerged to the Cripe site, the quarry. Um, and this is like the area that Baby Joe was found and like all these cool like fossils. And I thought, yeah, no way I'm finding anything. Um, Surprise, I didn't the first day. Uh, but I went to the quarry where we'd already, you know, scoped out a lot of fossils um you know and i was expecting it to be that scene from jurassic park where they're just like oh like fleshing it out and it's just like perfectly intact which is never ever 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 the case um and there's this massive dark line in the side of the rock and i was like huh that's got to be a a coal deposit or something i'm not i was so excited to look down that i didn't even think it was going to be in the walls or anything and it was this massive hadrosaur femur or a leg bone I uh, don't remember the specifics but I just remember being absolutely massive and us having to go so careful with picks around the side to try and collect it out as best we could um, and I remember I was given the job of starting to chip and I was chipping away and I was like this is a really big leg like this thing is like easily this wig on me I'm like it's hum to Avon's point it's really humbling like these things are giants like and they lived 65 plus million years ago and you're just a speck of dust so yeah truly truly cool experience well for our audience at home really quick as you might have guessed a lot of our students have the opportunity to go on these really great um, field excavations that we call peccary trips um, the story behind that is that when ray alf you know was a teacher at the web schools he used to take his students out for field trips and they went out to barstow which is about an hour and a half away from um, here at the museum. And out at Barstow, they've got these really, really great 15 million year old rock formations. And so they were walking around and the story goes that one of his students slipped and um, 
fell and tore his pants on something and you know he didn't know what it was uh dr ray alf went back and was like trying to figure out what he ripped his pants on and it ended up being part of the skull of a peccary a brand new species of peccary actually and so that's why we continue the name peccary trip in honor of that very very first picture there you go that's our logo right there the peccary now you know for a lot of high school students also you know they're lucky if they get to go on field trips like to a museum or something but for all three of you you've been able to go to some pretty cool places and experience what it's like to actually do field work which is you know really really cool i mean i didn't get to do field work until i was like in my 20s i guess um but for all of you what was that experience like you know for both you yvonne and logan you were like in just gra leaving eighth grade and moving into ninth grade and next thing you know you're digging up dinosaurs and in utah so what was that experience like for the first time for you it was uh, like to my eight year eighth eighth grade year old self that was one of the hardest things i've ever done like i'm not athletic like at all <laughs> and um it was a lot of hiking <laughs> that I had never done before in my life. Um, and it really forced me to push myself out of my comfort zone. Um, and a lot of heat, a lot of dust, a lot of sweat and just, and, and also no toilets, but, <laughs> um, but then you find that fossil that you never, it just comes out of nowhere. And, it's so unexpected and it just this feeling of deep satisfaction and then you go back to doing it all over again it is very satisfying and again very humbling um work but then you get to see you know your own progression you start that first rock that you find that you think is a fossil but then you start to learn and you start to develop an eye for it. Like it's a lot of practice. It's not perfect the first time, um, but it's definitely worth it. It is a, a lot if you're an indoors person. Um, personally, I've always liked the outdoors, so it wasn't much of a shift for me. Um, it was a little weird like going out, okay, here's the random point on the highway we're gonna just turn off <laughs> and you drive for like, you're like, okay, we're parking here, right? Five minutes later, we're parking here, right? And then, you know, you're driving for another 20 miles on this dirt patch. And then, then you decide, okay, now we can probably set up camp. And that's where you are. And then you have to hike in and out. Like, that was Kaparowitz. Um, that's been some other sites I've been to in Wyoming and Montana over the years. And it's, um, it's a really powerful experience to be out with people in the middle of nowhere. And, you know, you're hiking, as Vaughn said, like you're hiking for hours. You know, you have great, you have amazing time to talk to faculty and students that you might not have connected with on campus or, you know, you don't see as often. Um, and yes, it is hot, especially in the summer in the American West. It does get very hot. Um, tents, uh, tents and bucketing rain in Utah, like, you know, it's 101 in the morning and then an hour later it's bucketing rain and lightning and Dr. Lofgren puts his finger in the air and goes, it's going to rain. It's clear skies <laughs> and then it rains. So, you know, you have little stories like that um, and experiencing that for the first time was a shift, but it was exhilarating. For me, being in the field was awesome because it really took my education uh, out of the classroom into something a little uh, more experiential. So like I've been, uh, before coming to web, I was in uh, kind of the local public schools and I've always learned about things in the classroom, right? But you never really get to take it outside of that. And so it's always been about just like, you know, you learn the science in the classroom to fit all the standards that the state requires and to try to get that A. And then for the first time I was actually learning and experiencing at the same time. And that was such an awesome, awesome time. So I remember uh, going out into the field for the first time and just like sliding on these rocks, you, you get down on your hands and your knees and you're kind of like this against the rock. And um, you're just like looking for a little, little bone that, as I said, looks very similar to a rock. But it's such a cool experience because you're no longer the one reading about it in the textbook. You're the one doing the research. You're the one who, like, in theory, is going to be the future writing the textbook. Um, 
which was such an awesome, um, I can't say the word awesome, but it was truly an enlightening experience because for once I was like, hey, I can actually be the scientist. I don't need to be the, I don't need to be a learner. I can be the scientist. And that was a really cool thing to see. Did, uh, did anybody have to do the lick test while they were out in the field for the first time? So often. So often. Yeah, it's just a very, very strange experience for an eighth grader to get told by a grown man with a PhD to lick a rock in front of him. I think that was probably the strangest moment of my life. And then um, to then have him be like, okay, lick it. I lick it, takes it from me, looks at it, and then throws it over his shoulder in a 20-foot canyon and goes, all right, let's keep going. Probably the strangest experience he'll ever have. I've seen it's Dr. Farkey lick many a fossil. Like, he, there was, um, a ter- I found a Tyrannosaur tooth on the last Peccary trip, and I was like, Dr. Farkey, I think I found something. And he takes it, and then he just, like, pops it in his mouth, like candy, <laughs> and then he's like, and then he spits it out, and you're like, cool. <laughs> <laughs> For context, y'all, um, you lick a fossil to see, or a, a prospective fossil, to see if it's actually a fossil, because in theory, the fossil is supposed to stick to your tongue. Yeah. Uh, and a rock will not. So you're going to see, like, paleontologists in the field just pop fossils into their mouths to see if it'll stick to their tongue. It's such an odd experience, because these are grown men who you are learning from, just going, <laughs> huh. Like, mm-hmm. they're looking at, like, ice cream. It's <laughs> so fun. <laughs> I, yeah, it's, it's especially funny when you don't have a fossil it's just a rock and you're like that's not that's not a fossil <laughs> just get a <laughs> mouthful of dirt <laughs> well thanks for the clarification nick yes it, we are not just trolling our students it's an actual test that we do in the field you know fossils have are porous so if you lick it and it sticks to your tongue that means it's a you know, fossil if it's a rock they're usually not porous and so you lick it and like Logan said you can get like a tongue like sand on your tongue or something like that um, so, you know, we've said a lot of names, Dr. Farkey, Dr. Lofgren, uh, for those of you who may not know at home, Dr. Lofgren and Dr. Farkey are the two who have been essential in really developing this unique and amazing program at the web schools and the ALF Museum. Um, Dr. Ray ALF, he started the tradition of really using storytelling to teach our students and bringing them out and giving them actual field experiences. But thanks to Dr. Lofgren, we were able to create this really, truly immersive research program to learn about natural history and museum sciences and when dr farkey came in they really brought it to the next level of creating something that students can learn about the importance of science learn about the importance of research and apply that to other aspects of their life because dr farkey will tell you our goal is not to create more paleontologists even though i think the three of you are interested in kind of science right yeah okay yeah our Sorry, goal is not to not always create new paleontologists. <laughs> um, well, talking back about field stories, do any of you have like fun field stories that you want to share for like potential web students who might see this? Something that they have to look forward to? Go ahead, Logan. Yeah. Um, I've been on three summer peccary trips and plenty of Barstow weekend trips, so I've got a lot of funny stories. Um, I still think that my Tyrannosaur tooth has got to be the best one. So my sophomore, somewhere between my freshman and sophomore year, um, we headed to Wyoming for the first time. Um, this was a site that had really not been explored um, in the paleontology sense in a long time um, in northern Wyoming. And I was eager because, you know, this is the, it's the new site speech. It's the no one's been here speech. So I'm like, yeah. New discoveries right off the bat. Um, and we had some really experienced um, web faculty who have done a lot of trips. So, you know, they were finding things and a lot of older students who were finding things. Um, and I was not in the paleo class at this time. So I was still like kind of learning the difference between fossil and not fossil. Um, and so we spend a few days out there and it's like day two or three. And day two or three, turning up empty handed with other people find things around you. You know, you're happy for them, of course, but, you know, a little bit of. St- your soul gets crushed a little bit inside, uh, especially when it's 100 degrees out and Yvonne's found like, I don't know, 10 little fragments and you're just sitting there like, you got a rock. Uh, I brought some plant material back to Dr. Farkey, which I thought was super cool. And then he threw it over his shoulder saying, we've got so much of that. We don't need any more of that. I was like, okay. 
Um, and you start to get impatient. And that's when I learned the lesson of like patience is a virtue in the field. So, you know, I sat down on this little crevice and rock and Dr. Farkey said, you know, chip it, chip at some of the rock outlets, you know, that'll really bring out some fossils because solid rock will contain some more fossils jutting out of the soil than just loose soil where everything gets knocked around. I'm like, yeah, yeah, like he's just trying to, you know, make me feel better. And um, so I'm chipping there, I'm chipping there. And this, I hit this hollow thing and it's like a little poof in my face. And I was like, okay, keep going. And the dirt we were working in is a very, very beautiful light golden tan color. But what fell out was like this shiny black brown rock. And I was like, oh, that might be cool to look at. I look at it. And I turn the rock over. And I look. And I'm like, okay. And I look at it. And I'm like, wow, that's a really triangular rock. Like, that's a really beautiful rock. <laughs> um, until I take a squint in the blazing sun and go, wow, that, that looks like a knife's edge. Oh, that's serration. So this is a, like, a carnivorous dinosaur tooth. And it's got, like, the little bumps on the side of the tooth for, like, biting in the flesh like you see on, a like, a, a, a kitchen knife. And I, I just looked at it, and I was like, wow, this is great. And I went up to Dr. Farkey, and I showed him it. And he goes, wow, this is great. <laughs> so it was that moment of, like, wow, this is really awesome. And then I turned up nothing for the next three days. But that, as Yvonne said, was the satisfaction of finding that. And that was a really cool experience for me. Um, so many other funny ones of like Avon and I having to dig latrines. I've got kids like going to use the bathroom and sitting on cactus. Um, oh. yeah, <laughs> I've got, I've got a lot, a lot of campfire, you know, playing Uno at ridiculous hours of the morning in some random place, you know, really, really fun experiences, but I'll let someone else tell a funny one. I can go with a kind of fun one that's not directly a while we were searching for fossils, but it's as Logan was talking about kind of in the mix um so we come back from a long day of searching for fossils on our freshman year peccary chip and i don't think anybody in our class found anything oh we are a bunch of ninth graders uh you know what logan probably did uh, <laughs> judging by logan raising his hand um but the majority of the kids who have never done a peccary trip before just aren't finding anything we're not coming up on anything and we kind of come back disgruntled we're like oh gosh like what are we doing right um i'd never been camping before though and I, we go out and it gets dark and we lay out a little, um, we lay out a mat and we're all laying down under the stars. And legitimately, this is the first time I'd ever been able to see the stars. And I remember that moment because I like looked up and I'm like, whoa, there are a lot of those. And then we go up to the top of this like hill next to our camp and we all just lay down and look at the stars. Somebody brings out a ukulele, someone brings out um, a couple snacks and we just end up sitting on the top of a hill singing having like without the fire but like a mini campfire type of deal uh, looking up at the stars and I remember thinking wow this is really awesome even though I didn't find anything in the field today this is what a peccary trip is about it's about building community it's about uh, working together to kind of just experience science firsthand so I really enjoyed that that was a, that's a great story. I, I felt that one. I could hear the ukulele. That was really cool. <laughs> yeah, you could hear, like, the, we were doing the Spongebob fun song. That's <laughs> a, like, <laughs> could really, you could really resonate with that. Yeah. Music is a big part of the field, for sure. You can ask Dr. Farky what his favorite ones are. Britney Spears. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> for me, uh, one of my favorites favorite moments in the field um it's like the anticipation of your driving to the site um and usually like logan said it's very bumpy and i actually really like when it looks like, like bumpy um because like i i fall asleep and um we were driving out and it was like from what i i was told it was like a roller coaster ride i think logan can attest to that from and he's nodding his head but I fell asleep on the up and down um and it was it was very hot um and there were a lot of flies and ant hills at the site um and the flies they bit you but also it was so hot that the ants were like retreating back into their ant the ant hills because of how hot the outside air was 
Um, but then that means that we got to like kind of explore on top of the anthills where they brought like tiny little shark teeth, fish scales onto the surface. And you just see like everyone has their own anthill that they're just like sorting through. Um, and then um, one of the um, people in the prep who works at the museum, um, Mr. Jared Hoyk, he suddenly screams out like, I got a multi-tooth and multi-tuberculus is my favorite. It's like my favorite animal. And so I was like, where? And so I just like, I sprinted up a hill and I don't sprint because as we've established before, I don't run if it, I don't do anything if it takes extra physical exertion, but I, I sprinted at him. Like I charged straight at Mr. Jared. Um, and it, it was like a tiny little mammal tooth that was like, this big not not even that big and it was the most beautiful thing i've ever seen <laughs> and i i was extremely jealous that i did not find a mammal tooth like he did but i got to see him do it which is almost as good Yvonne is our multi tuberculate expert of the student researchers so i can just imagine you acting like the flash and one minute you're right next to mr jared that is pretty much how it went down <laughs> So, I mean, as, as a lot of you can see, the field is a really great experience for our students. You know, it, you form bonds, you form really great friendships. Um, you get to meet a lot of the cool museum folks. It's, it's, it's a very unique experience, but that's only one part of being part of the uh, museum experience at the web schools. You also get to actually have a, a museum right in your high school, right behind some of your classrooms. You get to work in there, you get to work in the prep lab. And, you know, for all three of you, um, what was it like, you know, the first day when you realized that, like, I can just go into the museum and look at fossils, kind of whatever you feel like it? Was that something that was just like, I don't believe this is real for a while? Oh, absolutely. Um, I remember the first time Doc handed me a specimen that was, we call it MQ, right? Like museum quality, but beyond that, something worth studying. So... He hands me this first fossil, and it is tiny. It is um, held up by a toothpick um, with glue, and then a little tooth that is, we measured it about a millimeter long. And I am studying this specimen, learning how to research that, and go under a microscope and like working specifically with these tiny little teeth was such a cool experience. Um, but it also taught me care. I'm not a very delicate person. Um, I, I play water polo and I swim, um, but I do not have very good body control, which sounds weird. But like, I, I'm just not very delicate with my hands. So it's definitely an experience. Um, but every day that week, there's these things called office hours at web where essentially you can go in after school and do pretty much extra time in a class. Every day that week, I just remember going in and looking at my specimen and trying to diagnose what is this fossil? What can I do with it? What, what should this research paper be on? Eventually, I looked at the specimen enough and said, I'm not finding any connections to anything here. Like, what is going on? And then I, I ended up saying, Doc, I think this is a new specimen. Like, I think this is a new species that we've never found before. And I write up this paper on uh, what is now deemed Dolosylindridon farkii, which is a new species of um, Dolosylindridon, which is a tiny rodent. And not only did that say that there was a new species, it also dated the genus um, back to the Uintin, when, or dated the family back to the Uintin when before it was in the Duchenne. So I also changed the time zone. It was essentially um, deemed as part of. That was so cool because now I, I created this contribution to science. And that was just by me like constantly going in and thinking, what am I doing? Like, what is, why can I not find any connections and I ended up making this awesome contribution to science. So yeah, that first experience of researching was such a cool one. Uh, for me, knowing that when it finally clicked that I could just go to the museum whenever I wanted, um, it was very surreal and very dreamlike. And I did the uh, museum uh, volunteer afternoon activity at Webb uh, for two seasons so I think it was winter and spring season 
since, yeah, since freshman year. And I basically spend every day there and it's become my happy place. Like I, it feels weird not going there at least once in my day just to kind of soak in the ambiance and the emotion that that place imparts. Um, it's a place of a lot of memories, both personal for me and also of, of like paleontology and the science of it all. Um, it's, and I'm just so grateful and so lucky that I have that space available to me so readily. Um, I think it was when we took classes, um, when we studied classes. So the part of the back area of the museum hosts our, our science um, facility. So there's a lot of classrooms uh, in there from everything from evolutionary biology in freshman year to integrated physics and chemistry sophomore year and all these different other electives, including, you know, the, the, the research classes for paleo. Um, and I have to say that I picked up on it, you know, walking, there's this double doors that lead into the main entrance of the museum um, from the classroom area back behind. Um, and just seeing people go in and out, you know, you didn't really think much of it. Um, and I think one day I was just out, like, after class, it was like a lunch maybe, and I just went into the double doors, the museum's open, and there's this weird like background music in the museum. It's like three <laughs> notes that's like bouncing back and forth. And there's an allosaurus. There's like dinosaur roars in there. Yeah, and there's like Sorry. dinosaur roars and like wind blowing. It's like super cool. Um, and I think I just sat in there with the allosaurus and like had that moment of peace at like lunch during stress, um, like stressful times. And I think that was the moment I was like, wow, this is a really peaceful space. Um, we're lucky to have it as a high school. And then once I was into the paleontology program and the research um, classes, being downstairs in the lab with the fossils and the microscopes and Dr. Farkey and, you know, the prep lab across the hall, um, it was really, really, yeah, it was like you're in a movie, you know, it's really cool. I do feel like that sometimes myself, even though I get to work there, you know, you get to go in and there's a new fossil every day, and uh, it's just really fun, I think. And, you know, I, I will also say that us at the museum are pretty lucky to have you three and all of our other Pecky scholars as our, as our students, because, you know, it, the museum program is not for everybody. We're, it, you know, it's for a, it's a select group of students who want to go into that program. And, um, you know, but there, there are lots of other ways that students can participate in the museum. Like Yvonne said, we have our afternoon activity program where students can come in at the end of the day. They can work in the prep lab. They can work on, in collections. They can do outreach stuff with me, do research with Doc. Um, everyone has a chance to do freshman pecker trips. But then after that, you have your advanced studies. And the three of you are in our advanced studies in paleontology class where you're basically researchers. You're doing first-hand research, working with Dr. Farkey and Dr. Lofgren to, like Nick said, contributing to science. Does that, like, just weird you out sometimes that you're, like, doing, like, things that people go to, like, college and get paid for as professionals, and you're doing actual research and publishing? Um, absolutely. Like, when I was in the museum afternoon activity, um, and I was looking at all these fossils and they have like the tags where they have like the person who collected it, the person who ID'd it. Um, and then one day I came across a little lizard skull and under collector, it said Yvonne Khan. And I was like, oh shoot, <laughs> that's the one that I found like that time, like a couple years ago. And it would dawned on me like I'm, actively contributing to this and some some days it feels more real than others that like I'm actually contributing to science that this is actually really important work that we're doing um and I'm really and it doesn't feel like like work sometimes like this is extremely therapeutic for me and it's also just so much fun like learning about fossils, learning about uh, all of these an a ancient animals and doing it with people who are just as dedicated and are in love with this 
science as much as I am is it feels like it's too good to call it work. Nick, uh, I'll go. Um, researching is incredibly, incredibly diverse and complex. And as Avon says, like you really have to be in it to win it and like, wow, this is what I'm doing and driven to come in every day to to really get a hold of it. I will say it is not for everyone. It is very dense. You know, we do a lot of reading. Like there's a, there's all the things that the paleontologists like walk into the field, pick it out of the dirt and go, this is blah, 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 blah. Like right off the bat. Like, um, no, for, for example, uh, my research, I had to read a lot of previous works by other paleontologists, you know, in the same region or on similar, sp similar species and uh, families of the um, specimen. So it's a lot of reading um, and, you know, learning that lingo of like, what is a, what is distal, what is proximal, what is posterior, you know, like all those kind of medical directional terms. And then you're learning about different kinds of teeth. Um, it's, you learn and it was the process of learning that I found most difficult. But once I got past that and you still do, you learn new things every day, you know, like you learn a new phrase or you learn like, hey, this, um, this family connects to this family, you know. You learn a lot more um, researching, um, I'd say, when you're hands-on, um, and it definitely, it's so cool. It, it, it really is. Like, you're taking pictures of it. I, like, two days ago, I was in the lab. I was taking pictures of the dromaeosaur teeth, and I'm zooming in on this serration, and I don't know. I will very Jurassic Park orientated because it's a it's a pop culture icon and a lot of people kind of re relate it's like that scene when Alan Grant is describing to the little kid like how the raptors kill their prey and when you're looking at these little teeth you're like well I can see why you know they're serrated they look like steak knives so you know seeing that and writing about it it's um very mature experience for you to realize that you are part of something bigger than yourself Yeah, I have a similar experience to actually Yvonne with this. I, I went on this peccary trip. Um, me and Yvonne were actually the only two students on this. We went out to the North Horn Formation in Utah. And we found this site. It was kind of um, separated from where Doc and a couple of other members of the Paleontology Museum were. And we kind of explore out. And we get into this matrix. And it is really slippery. And essentially what happens is I slip and I fall onto this um, kind of hillside. And then I reach down and realize that I see a tooth immediately. And I'm like, oh, shoot, this is awesome. And then I find another one within the next, like, two minutes. I was like, oh, shoot, I've run two teeth in two minutes. This is an awesome new site. So I call over the other members of the museum staff. And I'm like, hey, hey, let's look at what I found, right? We found this new museum site. And... Uh, they said, okay, let's mark it down as a locality. Nick, what do you want to name it? I said, wait, I, I get to name this place? They're like, yeah, this is a new locality. You get to name it. I never ended up coming up with a name. So it's now just known as Nick's site, <laughs> which I feel like greatly honored because now my name is on something. Um, and it's funny because Logan said that every day you're learning something new. It's crazy to think that people are going to look back on this research and learn something new from what we're doing. Um, a couple of days ago, I was I was completing my paper on um, Hardentia, and as I said, I, I we named Doacelindrid on Farky Eye after Doctor Farky, one of the members of the museum. But before then, I remember asking Doc, "Can I name it Ratatouille?" Like as a joke, <laughs> like Can I name it Ratatouille, and he's like, "You realize people are going to read this, right?" And I was like, and then I thought about this for a second. I was like, "No, you're right. People are actually reading this." and caring about this and this is a scientific publication but this is a big deal like this isn't a pixar movie and i just the more i reflected on that the more i was like this is amazing that the work that i'm doing in high school the work that i'm doing as part of a high school class is making this brilliant contribution to science i think that all of us a lot of at least for me personally uh, i thought that there were so many hurdles to get to a certain place where you're making significant contributions to paleontology. Um, but I think all of us, because we go to web, because we have this invaluable experience with the museum, we kind of get a jump start at it. Um, and 
before you know it, you start to see the progress that you're making and start to see the work actually appear, which is really awesome. I don't know about you all at home, but I'm very, very proud of these students. Aren't they just, aren't they just amazing, right? Like, I'm sitting here just listening, trying not to cry at how awesome they are. Um, Logan, you said something about, like, you know, Dr. Grant talking to kids. It's you, basically, you three are, like, the new Dr. Grants, though, right? Like, you've I been mean, able to, <laughs> you've been able to teach, talk to kids and create science and, you know, foster in this next generation of research. Yeah, I, w I will say um, I've done weekend volunteers uh, coming with people coming in and out because um, you just said working with kids and that like that's just such another great thing. Um, we as students have an opportunity if we would like to like help out. Avon is in the afternoon activity, which is selected, which is in the weekdays, but in weekends, you know, we can help up sign up. Um, we have discovery days. We have things down in the Claremont um, downtown as well as here on campus to promote other museums and universities research and, you know, compare notes, so to speak, in a professional sense. It's like Comic-Con for nerds and paleontology, basically. <laughs> Not quite the big thing. I don't know what the equivalent would be, Mr. Santos. But um, working with kids is it's really great because you see, you know, yourself. Like, I see little Logan with dinosaurs on the brain. Um, even if they do think the world is only, you know, 100 years old, like I had this three year old or four year old come in with his mom, like we have the time spiral at the very beginning of the exhibit, something that um, Dr. Alf talked about a lot. Um, it's this spiral of life. And at the end is this little tiny red strip where humans are. Uh, but the rest is this massive thing in a glass case. Um, and before I kind of point that out, I ask usually younger age kids how old they think the Earth is. And that's a pretty comical answer. Um, and it's really great to see their eyes light up when they see the big Allosaurus, which is called a T-Rex by four-year-olds, and my, my, heart <laughs> my heart cries a little bit, but it's really awesome to see that, and um, that's what it's all about. If you're comparing me to Alan Grant, I would take that as a huge compliment. Like, I looked up to Alan Grant as a kid, so, like, we'll roll with it. The, the whole Jurassic Park series um, was really, like, I'm going to be honest, I grew up on land before time, so I don't know, yes. I, I think that was my most influential thing for me. Like, growing up and being like, long neck, long neck. <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's really awesome, as Logan was talking about. I remember one time, we brought, we bring guests to web all the time. There was this one time where I was actually doing for, um, so at web we have these trips called Unbounded Days. During Unbounded Days, we focus for three to five days on a topic that, um, in the essentially in the field, um, but beyond paleontology. So, for example, I did a four-day-long course on immigration and asylum in the United States. We brought um, a couple of immigration attorneys to Web and different people from the immigration process to Web to just talk about what it's like and the experience, and. And then at the end, they said, hey, can we check out the museum? Um, so I showed them the museum. And it was really, really funny because these are people who are telling us about the whole judicial process. They're telling us about this very detailed, this very uh, long-winded process. And they seem so professional and so intelligent and so wise and so much older than me. And then they were freaking out because they saw the bear dog. And they're like, it's a bear and a dog? How does that work? <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, oh man, how do I explain this? So I just, I just remember thinking, this is incredible. Everybody can connect to paleontology. Um, I was actually doing a driving lesson, like, because, um, you know, getting my license. I'm, I'm a senior. I should have my license. Um, but anyways, I was doing a driving lesson, and my driving instructor goes up to me and says. Wait, you go to the web schools? I took my seven-year-old there last week. He loves lizards, he loves insects, and he loves paleontology. And I'm like, wow, paleontology is something that, connect, that can connect. It can bring people together. And as Logan said, that's what it's all about. Yeah, I completely agree with what both Nick and Logan have said. There's something about paleontology that just sparks a childlike, innocent joy in people regardless of how dedicated or um, committed 
you are to paleontology. Like you don't have to be a paleontologist um, to think that dinosaurs are cool. Um, and like, I remember in terms of like these events and um, interacting with people um, outside of this community, like I remember there was this one event where I had to dress up as like a Pokemon um, in like a Pokemon onesie. <laughs> And I was like, I mean, it was fun, but like a, a Pokemon like this, like imagine someone, and in this case, the someone was Mr. Santos telling you to put on this Pikachu suit for the pursuit of science. <laughs> um, again, very interesting and super fun experience. Um, I, I am guilty, I actually, I must confess, I've never, I still haven't seen Jurassic Park. Um, <laughs> I am so sorry. You um, call yourself a paleontologist? <laughs> I know. It's yeah, so yeah, what is this? It's like the, fa I, it's like land I, before time. It's like the founding thing in your mind of like I dinosaurs. Try. I, I still need to find the time to do it. I promise I will do it. Hopefully by the time I graduate. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, Yvonne, Yvonne. <laughs> okay, tomorrow we're staying after school. We're having a movie night, Jurassic Park. Just this, because... There is no question. This is happening. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's so cool how, like, I've never seen Jurassic Park. Obviously, they have. But, you know, we still kind of ended up at the same place. Both, uh, like, all of us in love with paleontology and wanting to learn more about it. And in my case, trying to learn more about the pop culture influences. <laughs> no, okay, for really quick, for those at home, I did just make him wear a, a Pikachu costume for the heck of it. We were talking about fossil Pokemon, so there was a whole thing behind it, okay? There was a connection there. But also, on the side of that, like, I, I, I will say that, you know, watching the three of you do, like, outreach events and all those really cool, like, you know, the, when you go visit conferences, you the three of you are amazing, and it shows the awesome, uh, like, the, the abilities of both Dr. Farkey and Dr. Lofgren to teach all of you about paleontology and the way that you've taken it and kind of, you know, pass it on to whoever is willing to listen. Um, I think one of the best compliments we've ever gotten, that Dr. Farkey's ever gotten, was he was talking to, um, or they were, we were at a conference, and some professional paleontologists were talking to web students, and they were like, oh, are they looking for a PhD program or something? And Dr. Farkey is like, actually, they're high school students. And their jaw dropped to the floor that they were talking to a high school student. And, I, you know, it could be the same for any three of you. Oh, speaking of, if any of you have questions for our students, please type them in the chat. We'll try our best to answer them before the end of today. Um, so, yeah, well, how about we move on to the next question of, you know, we talked a lot about, you know, field experiences. Being in the classroom, being in the museum, and all of you, obviously, if the paleontologist had such an impact on all of you, how would you say that the paleo program has prepared you for the future, you know, not just for college, but like, you know, life skills and anything that may come in, um, from now on after you graduate? You know, I have a joke amongst my family. I, I tell my family, you know, paleo made my life a lot more complicated. And this is what I mean by that. Um, before paleontology, I, w I was always a humanities kid. So I've always been interested in um, writing. I'm, I'm a spoken word poet. I've always been very directed in um, DEI work, which is diversity, equity, and inclusion work. And I always thought that was my future. I was going to go into the humanities. I was going into policy. I was going into legislation. And then I loved paleontology. And I loved research. And I loved earth science. And now I'm going into college. And I tell my mom, dang, I, I don't want to just not do STEM now. <laughs> so, I, so I'm like, paleontology made my life so much more complicated because now I don't know what I want to do directly in the future. And I think that's incredible. So I'm going to a, um, I'm a second semester senior, so I just committed to college. I'll be going to Brown University and it's a place where I get to pretty much explore what I want to do. And ultimately I chose that school because it gave me an opportunity to strike a balance where I didn't have to just focus on the humanities, I'm actually exploring STEM too, um, where I can really explore what I want to do and find the intersectionalities between humanities and science. 
I can find how science has, is influenced by humanity and how we can focus our science um, to create a more humane, to create a more just, and to create a more equitable world. And I think that's so incredible. Um, so what the Paleo program has done for me for the future is it gave me an outlet to explore beyond the humanities and find the connection. Um, for anyone wondering, I don't know what I want to do in the future. I don't have like a specific career plan. And I, I think that's okay right now. Um, I'm really interested totally in two okay. very, very distinct fields. Yeah. Um, earth sciences. So agricultural biology, because I love farming. Uh, that's one of my passions beyond paleontology. And if I get to stay out in, in nature, I would love that. And then educational policy. You might not see the intersections, but trust me, there are some, and it's really, really incredible. So yeah, that's how the paleo program has prepared me. I gotta go back to school. Anyway, just kidding. Who's next? Um, go for it. Well, for me, how paleontology has prepared me for the future. I actually want to go into paleontology. Um, so my dream is actually to become a future paleontologist, um, do research and teach people about um, the things that made me fall in love with paleontology. and. You know, it's taught me a lot about fossils, about life, um, ancient life, but also taught me about like all of these virtues that are necessary no matter what path I go down. Patience, resilience, um, teamwork with other people, whether it be in the field, in the museum, in the classroom, um, all of these collective experiences I will take with me to college and with me for the rest of my life. Yeah, I think Yvonne said it best about those values. Um, I'm kind of a traitor here. I'm completely a humanities guy. Um, the exception is paleontology. Um, with all the love I have for field work and lab work, I could never just consistently do it. Um, I'm actually interested in uh, international relations um, and global studies with um, security studies. Um, that's like counterterrorism and foreign policy. And I'll be doing that at American University in Washington, D.C. So I get to carry some of the things I learned about interacting with others. I want to bounce on that. Um, you learn from people of different backgrounds. You go to talk to different people from different universities in different countries. We had paleontologists from all over the world, you know, you name it, China, Italy. Um, I think we've had some from Latin America. We've had, I know, I know China and Italy for sure um, have come through and those have been really cool. And you know, there's a greater paleo community beyond the United States. Um, and realizing that is really important to acknowledge uh, other people's accomplishments. Um, and I think that interacting with those people and learning from, you know, finding the same common ground to work towards, you know, as we talked about, it's all about finding the truth of science and like, what was this thing, as Nick said, and that's the common goal. And I think that was really a beautiful thing to see. And that's something that'll help me. Um, I know you said that's not going to like what's not going to help you in college, but writing those long papers is going to help like 18 pages. No problem. You got it, man. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be sitting next to classmates lectures, I fear, and they're going to be like, okay, guys, so 10 pages, I'm going to hear some gasps from behind me. I, I'm not sure. Maybe, maybe I'll have that. So I think I'm prepared for that um, dense, dense information. But um, seriously, the, the connection on a, a common topic and a common drive from people around the world. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for that. It's Unfortunately, we're coming near the end of our panel. This has been really great. You've all shared some really great stories. Um, before we end it, how about if for any future web kids who might be watching, um, really quick, one piece of advice you'd give them before they come and maybe take the museum program track? Go for it. All right, I start us off. Um, if I had one piece of advice, it would be as simple as just go for it. Um, truly, I didn't expect to be in paleontology until I was in paleontology. It was something super foreign to me. And ultimately, I came into web not knowing what it was. Um, freshman year, as I said, I didn't even know what a fossil looked like. And ultimately, I fell in love with it. Uh, I think that's the beautiful thing about web, about high school, about the museum. It really gives you this opportunity to just go for it and really explore everything. Um, 
at Webb, you also don't need to be limited to just one thing. Um, I think there's this like myth that in high school, uh, you have to be limited. You, you can be just the athlete or you can be the spirit kid or you can be a really academic nerd. That's not accurate, um, one. And two, I think that the, the most fulfilling high school experience is one where you get to explore all of the above, uh, where you're not limited to just being that kid um, in that one specific field. It's really finding the intersections between all of them. So I would just, I would advise you no matter what it is, whether it's paleontology or it's that sports or it's that club or it's that class, just go for it, try it out and you might learn a lot. Thanks, Nick, you took mine. <laughs> I was just gonna <laughs> say, um, yeah, if just, if you're interested, even vaguely interested in something, definitely try it because you might learn something more about yourself. For me, I didn't like, I didn't know that I was capable of doing everything that I have accomplished with the paleontology program. I didn't know I could hike that far. I didn't know that I could write papers that long. Um, and even if it's hard, I know now that I can do it and that more so I actually really love it. Um, and you learn more about what yourself about yourself and what you're capable of. Um, and taking that risk, it just pushes you one step towards discovering a little bit more about yourself. Uh, funnily enough, um, like Monday afternoon, we had this meeting, the same question in our PA meeting about what, what piece of advice? Um, wow, yeah, Nick and Yvonne really set the bar high. Wow, I got across <laughs> this one. I was thinking about it, they're both talking because those were two things I was going to say. Um, if you apply and you are accepted, you belong here. Uh, it's a very rigorous process. Um, I'll admit, when I came here, I was surrounded by kids going like 100 miles an hour. Like, you know, you feel like you're sitting in the slow lane sometimes at Webb. You're just surrounded by all these incredibly talented and brilliant and vibrant people. And sometimes if you're a little hard on yourself like myself, it can be really hard to um, find your pace and find your balance. Um, but just know that if you're here with us in this community, that um, it's worth a shot. You know, you're here and people here are some of the best people you'll ever meet. Man, they're weird, but they're some of the best people you'll <laughs> ever meet. Um, and just just be yourself. You don't have to be anyone else here. Um, and as Avon said, you learn from yourself that way. You know, I didn't know I could do that swim set. I didn't know I could go from theater to water polo. You know, I didn't know I could find a 85 million year old fossil in a rock in Mo Montana. You know, it's exploring who you are, but being you in this space. Um, and you are here, therefore you you have the opportunity to do that. Awesome. Thank you all so much for this really, really great panel. As all of you at home can see, these three students are absolutely fantastic, and we're just so proud to have them as part of our Peccary Scholars. And really quick, Logan, um, do you know what Gene Drinkwire, uh, they're saying that they were your Montessori teacher, and you've been a dinosaur lover all your life, and so they joined us in the chat today. They did. Thank you, guys. <laughs> well, uh, that about does it for our panel. Thank you. Thank to all three of you for joining us. This has been a really fun panel. We learned a lot. And thanks so much to everybody at home for tuning in and learning about the ALF Museum and our really, really amazing, unique program that we have at the Web Schools. Um, if you want to learn more about our programs, we have Moments of Time again next month on March 23rd, where you'll actually get a better in-depth look at one of our current research projects as some of our other Peccary students, um, uh, Peccary scholars, uh, give talks about what they're actually trying to research in the program. Um, also coming up, we have Discovery Day on March 12th. Um, this upcoming one is called The Power of Plants. We're going to look at plants through natural history and the way that they affect our world today. And as always, if you like this program and want to support programs like it at the ALF Museum, from our students to our outreach programs, you can find links on how to do that in the description below. Make sure you like and subscribe for more stories from the world of paleontology, and we'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody.